Hello, it is Thursday, April 25th, 2024. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Thursday crossword today, which means we're going to be solving a themed puzzle, and the theme may well be particularly interesting, intricate, or uh, unusual or surprising. We'll just have to find out. And today's interesting or intricate or unusual or surprising edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Henrik Koskinen, Josh Lucas, and as always, the indomitable Shoalmaster and the ineffable Josh Bordeaux. Thank you so much to the four of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for their generous support. They do sustain this channel. They help keep this whole enterprise a sustainable part of my daily work, and I'm very grateful to them for that. So thank you to those four. Thanks to everybody who's a patron of the channel. Uh, it does keep this whole thing going. And if you'd like to do so yourself, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the description field link where you'll find all of the bonus videos, such as this week's Boss Words Spring Themeless League video that went up yesterday. Um, it's another pretty good one. I think it was a it was a pretty good solve. So do enjoy that if you're uh, have you have access to those Patreon videos. And uh, thanks to everybody who is a patron. And thanks as well if you subscribe to the channel on YouTube. That is a big help. Of course, uh, subscribing, liking the videos, commenting, those things are all helpful. And finally, there's that Daily Solve Discord chat server that you can join via a description field link. So check it out. All right, let's get on to today's crossword, which is the second construction by Han uh, Hoon. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing that. And it was edited once again by Joel Faliano. So let's start solving See, oh, actually, I can see some circled cells, so that suggests something thematic. Let's find out just what. All right, snap. It could mean something, you know, physically snaps. It could mean you do something in a snap. You do it very quickly. In a GIF, maybe? No, Vegas winter hours wouldn't start with a J. Um, Vegas winter hours. I... Las Vegas surely is on Pacific time, so this would be Pacific Standard Time. Could a snap be a pop? That doesn't. Those things aren't really the same. Hmm. Not actually sure. What about this one? Dirty look. Well, my very first thought here is sneer, which doesn't fit. But the thing about circled cells is they could mean anything. We could be putting multiple letters in them. We could be putting. Uh, the same letter in all of them, we could be putting nothing in them. And that, that would work if we if we spelled sneer like this. I have no way to know yet if that is actually what these circled cells are doing, but it is genuinely the first word that comes to mind to me for dirty lurk. look. And maybe it's because I already thought of it, but I can't think of very many other alternatives. So let's just see if this if this hangs together at all. Oh, maybe not. German pronoun. Never mind. Maybe this is actually completely wrong. Because German pronoun, I would think to be, could be a number of things, actually. Uh, could be Z or Ein or Im. Um, do any of those help me? Z, German, dirty look. What's a dirty look? Or yeah, I've never seen in or im in the New York Times crossword. I'm not even sure I've seen Z in the German context, but I'm not really sure. It's very rare to get to get German vocabulary. It's more, much more common to get Spanish or French or Italian to a lesser extent. Hmm. Uh, seats of power, thrones. Oh, what is this German pronoun? Oh, ich. Oh, it's the. Didn't think of that. It's the first person pronoun in German. Okay, ich. That that's more. That that's a that actually. You know, has made its way to English, not necessarily as a loan word in English, but through well-known you know historical phrases like ich bin ein Berliner, that kind of thing. So. That actually seems much more plausible to me. So then what's this one? A scowl, maybe. That would be funny because that would also do the same thing that I was saying earlier. What, what could it be if we're filling in those circles? A... Why everything I can think of it doesn't use them. What about this one? Ire. And snap. Oh, a picture. A pic. Yeah, you take a snap 
photo with snapshot. Okay, so ire is cur? I don't think that's anything. I'm not sure what's going on here, to be honest. Ire. What would a word for ire be? Anger, obviously, but what else? Um, sort of bile? Something like that? Is there colic? I don't know what's going on here. What about this one? Leads of La La Land. I think this is simply L's, the letter L, because the leading letters of the words La, La, and Land are L. So I think it's as simple as that. So this could be scowl if we're skipping those letters. Here we have misfortune, um, an ill or mm, woe. Yes, you could say woe. That was my woe. That was my misfortune. Okay, to have because of is to owe something to someone. Yeah, okay, I think this is scowl. And I don't understand what that means here. C-R, ire. I don't understand what that means. Hmm. All right, well, we'll figure it out eventually. One, two, three, etc. And yeah, I don't, I don't know what this means in the down, the circle, so I don't know what that does. Signal to snap. Oh, that's funny. So we had snap up here and signal to snap here. What does that mean? A Q or a, what is that? Signal to, oh, oh, in, in NF, in the NFL, um, when they say hut and then they snap the ball, I think that must be what that is. So what is this? One, two, three. Oh, is this numbers? Whole numbers. Oh, this is a hole. Collar. I was thinking collar, but I wasn't, but I was, I, for some reason I couldn't quite bring it to mind. I was thinking of, I was thinking of, uh, like the French spelling of color for some reason. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure what I was thinking, but I, I had the right basic word in my head, but I couldn't, I, I couldn't sort of realize it into a correct English word. I don't know why, but yes, collar, C-H-O-L-E-R is a word for ire or anger. And that is using this circle to, you know, to mean whole. I'm not going to put whole in there because that then sort of breaks the the across clue. But I think these are left, these are in fact left blank, not for the, well, I was going to say not for the reason I thought, but I didn't have a specific reason other than it allowed me to originally put sneer in there, which wasn't even right. Um, but it does leave, it, it is blank in the acrosses and in the downs, I think it serves as a whole. C-H-O-L-E-R. And then here a whole number is great. Okay, good. Now that I've over explained that, we can move on. Expressing wonder. If you're expressing wonder, you're ooing, maybe ooing and possibly even eyeing. Longtime judge on Britain's Got Talent and America's Got Talent. I've never watched these. Um, this is not my kind of thing, but I have heard of Simon Cowell. I mean, I've heard of and even know what he looks like. So I'm pretty sure that's the answer. Um, and that does fit. So are these holes? Low tech security measures on some doors. Peepholes? That would be a security measure in the sense of knowing who's outside before opening the door. Procedure performed by an OB. An amnio, maybe? Um, that could be the answer. That seems reasonable to be performed by an obstetrician. Let's look at the acrosses. Warm-up leader at a race. Oh, a pace car? Is there such a thing as a warm-up in auto racing? I don't know really enough about this. I mean, I know of the concept of a pace car. Um, I don't know if that's what this is. Passionate as a performance, maybe emotive. That could be a passionate performance in which you're sort of strongly emoting. Good and hot. I'm not sure about that one. Popular backyard game. Oh, cornhole. Uh, there we go. And once again, we're using hole there where you toss a beanbag, I guess, into a hole. Is that what it is? Important info for a connection in brief. Uh, oh, estimated time of departure or arrival, I guess. If you're making a connection 
uh, on a flight, and you'd need to know the estimated time of arrival. But you might, you'd also need to know your own estimated time of depart. Well, no, you need to know your own estimated time of arrival and the departure of the next flight. So I don't know which of these it is. Good and hot. Enraged, maybe? If it were the A. Smoke. Yes, a smoke is a cig, a cigarette. Address abbreviation, AV for Avenue. And Detroit Red, nickname for Malcolm X. Okay, there we go. So I think this is actually all filled in. I think this is all correct. So this was pace car. All right. Kind of workout class, a spin class with the uh, stationary bicycles. Instruction to open some restaurant menus. Oh, scan, because these days, sometimes at a restaurant, you'll find the menu is available by way of a QR, QR code that you scan with your phone and look at on, on, online. Okay, so I think that's probably right. Small power sources. Oh, oh, I don't know why I put an E here. It's peepholes, plural. The E is part of the whole that's implicit. Okay, small power sources are double A batteries, double A's, here we go. And ingenious person. No, it's not a genius person. Sorry, it's an ingenuous person. So it's a naive, someone who, uh, they're ingenuous, which we don't use as often as we do the opposite, disingenuous. But anyway, this would refer to someone more naive or you know, maybe even more credulous. Okay, surrounded. Something in. Uh, can't quite see what it is. Penned in, something like that. Alternative would be plan B. Burdens, if you burden someone with something, you saddle them with it. So burdens with is saddles with. There we go. Oh, wedged in, maybe surrounded? Prodigy. No, I don't, don't think W here. Prodigy. A, someone who's preternaturally good at something. Um, what about this laptop brand? Oh, Lenovo is a uh, brand of laptops that you see occasionally. So this does look like wedged in. It could be hedged in, surrounded. Maybe it's that. Prodigy. Oh, yes, it is, because a prodigy could be a phenom, you know, a phenomenon, an impressive, often younger player uh, or participant of something. Lit part of an 11 down. So the end is the part that's lit of a cigarette in 11 down. Doesn't matter to me. No loss. Yeah, okay. No big deal. No loss. Doesn't matter to me. From in France. Uh, this could be day, so this would be uh, from the, more specifically, I suppose, in this particular case, um, from the plural. And then one wearing stripes, a ref, a referee in a, in a match. Okay, creature of fantasy, probably an orc, I would think, but let's check it here. Ready to move on from. Yes, yeah, so if you're over something, you're ready to move on from it. And then city in the Pacific Northwest with a Russian-sounding name. Uh, Moscow something. Um, in the Pacific Northwest, Idaho, I'm trying to think what states in the Pacific Northwest would fit. I'm not familiar with this city, but it could well be the case. Let's see if that, if that's the case. R2, yes, the, the droid from Star Wars is R2-D2. So I think it probably is Moscow, Idaho. And like, 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 sorry, like, like, like this clue, 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 echoing echoed that must be the case um what about this yes musician brian the official male solo artist of the new york times crossword brian eno i haven't seen brian eno in a little while but he's never never too far away from a new york times crossword and uh, i think that probably confirms echoed is correct jazz singer carmen mm, not sure i wonder if i'll recognize the name but, but I, i'm not sure if i will or not Mixtape, medium, uh, cassette. So you'd make a mixtape on a cassette tape, an audio tape. Uh, or you'd make it these days digitally, I suppose. Harsh cries. Cause, right, okay, like a bird, cawing. There we go, that's what it is. And something checkered in New York's past, taxi. So I suppose that's getting at the fact that New York taxis are no longer checkered as they were in the... I don't know, probably sort of 40s to 80s, maybe if I had to guess. Um, and, uh, but, you know, the sort of iconic checkered New York taxi. Thanks for sharing, not. Um, I don't know what we're looking for there.
Oh, oh, I do see what we're looking for. TMI, too much information. It doesn't mean sharing something physically with someone. It means sharing information, sharing something verbally. All right, letters on an ambulance. Uh, EMS, I think, for emergency medical service. And Ford's discontinued in 1959. Edsel's. This is one of the, I would stop short of calling this an official model of car of the New York Times crossword, but it certainly is one of the more commonly referenced car models. Uh, it was a famously uh, unsuccessful model of Ford, the Ford Edsel, named, I believe, for Henry Ford's son, Edsel Ford, who I think also became a Ford executive. Anyway, historian's verb was, okay, that's straightforward enough, I think. This was the case. Spider-Man adversary played by Jamie Foxx. I do not know this. Oh, is it Electro? Is that the name of a Spider-Man adversary? I feel as though that might be the case, but I don't think I've seen whatever film, whichever Spider-Man film this was. I think I've only seen the um, the uh, Sam Raimi ones, but I don't remember Jamie Foxx being in any of them. Anyway, I guess this is probably the case. Plant with lance-shaped leaves. Oh, aloe. The official medicinal plant of the New York Times crossword. There we go. And novel parodied by Umberto Eco's Granita, Lolita. There we go. I don't remember. What is Umberto Eco's Granita? Is that an essay? I've read all of Umberto Eco's novels, and I, there isn't one called that unless I've somehow not been aware of it, which would be sort of surprising. It must be an essay. He wrote he wrote many essays, or, short, or maybe a short story. I don't know. I'll have to look that up. Anyway, uh, gender prefix. Uh, cisgender is a prefix for a word. Um, and then tenant is, oh, a lessee, a tenant, someone who rents. Jazz singer, Carm, oh, McRae. I, I hope that's correct. I don't think I know the person. Breakdown is dismantle something. Wicked stuff, tax, facts, max, I don't know if these are obviously... I'm not really sure about that one. Not retail. Wholesale? I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really sure what we're looking for there. Okay. Puzzle out. Suss out? Um, I don't know. Oh, I'm kind of falling apart here, aren't I? The tiniest bit. Quarterbacks pass. Um... I don't know. I shouldn't. I shouldn't sit there thinking. I'm not going to know what that is. Big name in sports betting. I don't know that either. Yao or a phonetic hint to this puzzle's theme. Oh, right. Hold. Hold something. Hold. Wow. I don't know. Oh, hold. Hold out. No, that doesn't mean wow. Hold it. That doesn't fit. I'm not sure what that is. Globe for one. An orb. Uncovered dirt in a way. Oh, to to hoe a garden, uncover dirt. Me. Moi? I don't know. I don't know. Former AT&T competitor. MCI? That was a that was a telecom I remember when I was growing up. I don't know if that's the answer. Me. Oh, it could be actually, because me could start with I. I do or I am, something like that. Let's try it and see if that works. Quarterbacks pass. Um, yeah, okay. I just have no clue about that. Um, where peas are queued, where peas are queued at a supermarket checkout line. I don't quite know what this is about. Powerful card in the game president. Have I ever played president? I don't know. Maybe the ace or the two. I'm just trying to think of cards that would fit in three letters. Okay, this is this is a rough area, isn't it? Me, I. Maybe, maybe if it were two, this could be I do. Where P's are queued. Former at and Let's try MCI. Oh, attempt. Quarterbacks pass. Oh, an attempt. Okay, it's a totally normal word. Where P's are queued. Oh, pod. They're queued up in a pod physically. Okay. And then, oh, holy cow. Oh, echoey. It's not echoed like, like, like this clue, clue, clue. It's echoey. A bit of a, a bit of an iffy word, but there it is. 
Holy cow. What does the cow mean? Oh, oh, I didn't notice this. <laughs> we have cow spelled out in every uh, sort of penning in every pair of circles. That's that's very nice. Well, that's that's very well done. I didn't pick up on that at all. Nice. Okay, that, that does elevate this theme a bit. Um, okay, so it is, we have holy cow. That's very nice. And then the, uh, that's the spot. Ah. Uh, Okay, here we have journalist uh, Tarbell Ida. I think Ida Tarbell, famously, famous sort of muckraking journalist. Pretty sure that's right. Let's check the crosses, though. The tiniest bit. Hmm, okay, I'm just not... Oh, one iota, maybe? Yeah. Okay, you could say not one iota, not the tiniest bit. All right. Big name in sports betting, that I don't know. Air so frequently could be oft, and the air, the ever... Uh, contracted to air is indicating poetic language. That's what that's doing, as an oft would be a poetic way to say frequently or often. Pass. No, not, gnaw, maybe, not N-A-H, maybe. Um, globe for one. Could, this could be a W as well. Yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, suffix with methyl. Methylene, probably. That sounds correct. Fandango, that's not, that's a movie website. Big name in sports betting, I yeah, don't know. Fan, probably something to do with fans, sports fans. Sink the putt. Oh, right, and this will be hole. Hole, but I don't know enough golf terminology to know what that is, unfortunately. What ecto means as a prefix? Uh, it means outer, so, you know, ecto would be outside, you know, the body often in, a, in an anatomical sense. Um, so it's probably just the word outer. Puzzle out. It probably is sus out. Look at that. Okay, so then hole sinks the putt. Holes out? Holes, is that a phrase? Holes out? Doesn't sound familiar to me at all, but it does sound plausible. Not retail. Oh, right. I, can, I think when I looked at this before, I, I wasn't thinking about the whole bit. So, oh, it is wholesale. <laughs> it was the thing I said, but I didn't consider it because it was so much longer than the... Um, the space for the answer. Right. Okay. Well, there we go. And then sinks the putt. Oh, fa this could be fan duel. If this, if this were holes out that, and that, that all sounds plausible globe for one. Oh, a theater as in Shakespeare, the th theater in which Shakespeare performed many of his plays, the globe theater. Okay. Um, and, and there are numerous theaters today, uh, of that name pass. Nah, including one here in London that is not technically on the site of Shakespeare's original globe, but slightly down the river because that was what was available. Uh, anyway, sinks the putt. It holds out. Yep. There it is. Okay. I'm very glad that the puzzle was accepted with these being blank. I wonder if it would have also been expected, sorry, accepted had we put whole into all of these using the rebus function. I didn't do that in part because it, for the reason I said that it felt a bit messy to add it in when the crosses didn't actually use it, but also because then I wouldn't have had to explain what a rebus is. And I still won't for now uh, because it wasn't actually necessary to solve this puzzle. Uh, but there we have it. That was a very clever Thursday crossword with our holy cow theme. Um, something I didn't notice until I saw the revealer. Uh, fortunately, I picked up on the sort of underlying element of the theme that the, well, I suspected even before I understood why that these might be left blank. And what's funny about it is that it wasn't even for the right reason. It was because I thought that this answer might be sneer. But also I think I've just seen enough puzzles with things like circled cells to be predisposed to consider different things they could be doing. Um, and that's just something that you get by solving more crosswords. Um, so there we have it. We had scowl. Well, we had, well, what are our, that's not as interesting. What are our whole clues? We had collar. We had whole numbers, uh, peepholes, cornhole, uh, wholesale. I really like that one. And holes out. There we go. And those were, uh, well, they intersected with components of our holy cows. Very good. Our three holy cows, in fact. And that was the Thursday crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'll probably be back tomorrow for the Friday. Um, I have a bit of travel coming up this 
this long weekend. Uh, so there might be one or two days in which I substitute the puzzle with uh, a different bit of solving. So apologies if that's the case, but I hope you enjoy uh, whatever it is I put up. So uh, look forward to that either way. I'll do my best to get to get the crossword up every day. I might miss some of the uh, other word puzzles I solve on the channel, but we'll see. Anyway, should be back tomorrow. Uh, and do join me for that Friday puzzle. Until then, do have an excellent remainder of your Thursday. Take care. Uh -huh.